On today's show, Lamborghini unveils an all-electric concept supercar that hints at what we can expect from the prancing bull in the future. Tesla launches chill mode to let owners tame the crazy acceleration of every Tesla electric car. And IC Bus unveils a working all-electric school bus that could put an end to the noisy, smelly buses of today. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 49% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis a weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener transport. As always, thanks for joining me. We start today's show in the world of supercars, where Italian automaker Lamborghini, which I should note is actually owned by Audi, which is in turn owned by Volkswagen, unveiled a brand new concept car this week that hints that the prancing bull is readying itself to go all electric. Called the Terzo Millennio, that's third millennium for those who don't speak Italian, the sleek concept two-seater features powerful all-electric all-wheel drive capabilities, a nanotube self-healing carbon fiber body, and says Lamborghini, either structural carbon fiber batteries or supercapacitors. Yes, this is a concept car that you can't drive, but instead represents the work that those clever folks at MIT are doing with Lamborghini to develop all of the above technologies. Will we ever see an all-electric Lambo? Probably. But the features list here, while exciting, aren't likely to feature on a production vehicle anytime soon. By now, I'm sure you're all familiar with Tesla's over-the-air software update system, which allows Tesla to tweak the capabilities and features of its electric cars without ever asking the customer to head to the local Tesla service center for an update. To date, the OTA system has unlocked new capabilities like autonomous driving, tweaked user interfaces, and even improved performance for certain Model S cars. But this week, Tesla unveiled Chill Mode, a new feature in the latest OTA that tames the throttle mapping to give a more chilled out, calmer driving experience. I'm sure some owners won't like it, but I have to admit that the Tesla Model S 60 was my favorite Tesla for a while because its throttle response was a lot more everyday than higher end models. I guess it's down to personal tastes, right? If you've been following the Google self-driving project, now known as Waymo, you'll have seen it progress along the road to full autonomy, from early prototype self-driving Toyota Prii to autonomous Lexus SUVs, those little bubble EVs, and more recently, very impressive Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivans fitted with all the latest technology. That journey to full autonomy now seems complete, with Waymo announcing its Pacifica hybrids are now undergoing full autonomous vehicle testing on the public highway with nobody in the driver's seat. At the moment, these tests are restricted to the Phoenix metro area in Arizona, but Waymo says it will be offering test rides to members of the public. I'm not a fan of Arizonan heat, but I guess I've now got another reason to plan a visit to see friends there, right? If there's one theme running through today's show, it's autonomy. And this next story combines both autonomous vehicles and electric vehicles, courtesy of Workhorse, the US startup trying to revolutionize the commercial vehicle world with its range of plug-in vehicles. I'm sure you've already heard of the versatile Workhorse W15 range extended electric pickup truck. And now the same company has unveiled the NGEN, an all-electric panel van that comes as standard with a horsefly delivery drone, great for last mile delivery purposes. Workhorse says the NGEN can come with an optional range extending petrol engine for those who want it, but with an expected 160k range fully laden, I'm doubtful that most delivery companies will really need it. By now, I hope you've heard about Ecotricity's new price plan called Eco Wholesale. It's a great new energy product that makes it easier to save your wallet and the planet. But if you haven't heard about it yet, stick around and I'll tell you about it now. Eco Wholesale links you directly to our 100% renewable wholesale prices with a small admin fee. In fact, it's now New Zealand's most affordable carbon zero certified electricity. There are no joining fees, no fixed term contracts, just New Zealand's most affordable way to buy power. And it could save you a massive $400 on your home electricity bill in just a year or $4,000 if you run a business. So clever Kiwis switch to Eco Wholesale with Ecotricity. It's the cleanest and most affordable way to charge up your home and your electric vehicle. And it only takes a couple of minutes to join Eco Wholesale, so just follow the link in the notes below. 
Our next story concerns the Opel Ampera E, a car which has suffered massive price hikes of more than 5,700 euro just weeks after Opel asked dealers to stop taking orders for the Bolt EV's European sibling due to the lack of vehicles coming in from the US. And while the Ampera E or the Bolt EV isn't available to Kiwi buyers yet, we heard more bad news this week about the Opel Ampera E, which has suffered a massive price hike of more than €5,700 just weeks after Opel asked dealers to stop taking orders for the Bolt EV's European sibling due to a lack of vehicles from the US. The reason for the price hike seems to be partially down to the exchange rate between the dollar and the euro, but also down to just a lack of interest from either GM or Opel to push this car. And with Opel no longer part of GM, it was acquired by Peugeot Citroën earlier this year, it's unclear what the future of the Ampera E really is in Europe looking forwards. Unless you're an avid fan of two-wheeled motorised transportation, the chances are that you don't know about the EICMA motorcycle show going on right now in Milan. But not to worry, because you do know now. And this year at the EICMA, we've seen several electric motorcycles debut. But perhaps the most exciting is the Energica Evo SASA 9, a classic scrambler that reminds me very much of the current Ducati scrambler lineup, except of course, it's all electric. At the moment, it comes with an 80 kilowatt electric motor, 11 and a half kilowatt hour battery pack, and has a limited top speed of 125 miles per hour. That's 200 kph. Range is only 125 miles in eco mode, but this is a performance bike first and foremost which is why it comes with CCS quick charging for rapid refueling on the road. It's not exactly cheap at about 25,000 US dollars, but still every fiber of my being wants to ride one. So Energica, can I please come to the press launch, please? Earlier on, I told you that there was an autonomous vehicle theme running through today's show and this next story proves it. Courtesy of Navia, an autonomous vehicle company which has just launched a new six-seat autonomous vehicle. The company has been testing three 15-seat autonomous buses in the heart of Paris since July. But thanks to some serious cash injection from investors, the company has just launched a new six-seat autonomous SUV-style robo-taxi, which it plans to sell to private buyers in about a year's time. The price? A cool $290,000, which is certainly more than a Tesla Model X, but I'm guessing this is going for a slightly different clientele, namely taxi services and large corporations wanting to shuttle visitors around without a single driver on board. What do you make of it? I quite like it. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. As the push to electric vehicles has gained speed, we've seen some old guards of the automotive industry worry about how profitable automakers will be after spending billions on transitioning from fossil fuels to electric vehicles. Many of them, members of the board at various German automakers, still remain to be convinced. But this week, Porsche CFO Lutz Menschke told Automotive News Europe that Porsche believes it will remain profitable and continue to thrive even after spending all that cash on electrification. Moreover, despite tough competition from Tesla, Porsche believes that it will thrive in the electric vehicle marketplace with cars like the Mission E leading the way. But while he was bullish about EVs, Menschke said that Porsche wouldn't be making any rash decisions on the future of diesel. I guess there's something of a comfort blankie scenario going on for the Porsche board, eh? As more and more companies start to look at plug-in vehicles with serious intentions of building their own, we're starting to see more and more money invested into new forms of electric vehicle batteries. And this week, Volkswagen announced that it would be working with Google on developing a new electric car battery pack that are more energy dense, could charge faster and last longer. Why Google? Well, Volkswagen doesn't want Google's material sciences expertise, but rather its quantum computing prowess. Because quantum computing can help accelerate the R&D process in ways that just aren't possible with traditional computers, and with accurate, intricate calculations essential to better dealing with battery design, especially when dealing with molecular level changes, it makes sense for Volkswagen to go with one of the world's biggest specialists on quantum computing. Here's hoping the partnership is fruitful and of course, I'll keep you updated with any news I get on the subject. When it comes to autonomous vehicles, we often focus on the everyday capabilities such vehicles exhibit, such as their ability to follow traffic direction, yield for pedestrians, and ensure that they don't hold up other road users. 
But what we don't focus on so much is the ability of autonomous vehicles to match professional drivers in terms of skill and speed on the test course. Yet this week, Renault unveiled a new autonomous Zoe EV that's been developed alongside a team at Stanford University that can not only handle an obstacle course with perfection, but can do it at the same kind of speed that a professional driver can. This video shows just how comfortable the car is at speed and why you might not think that those skills are useful in the real world, it's worth remembering that quick reactions and controlled avoidance maneuvers at speed can sometimes make the difference between crashing or not. Well done, guys. And finally, unless you're one of the very lucky people who didn't have to ride the bus to school, you'll have fond, or perhaps not so fond, memories of riding the school bus. Be it a bright yellow US style or one of the more mainstream coaches used in Europe, most school buses are old, clunky, and noisy thanks to the large diesel engines that usually power them. We've covered electric alternatives to those buses on this show before, but now there's a new player in the form of the IC Bus Char G, an all-electric school bus prototype that's quite fancy, with a range of up to 125 miles per charge, that's 200 kilometers. This full-size concept previews a vehicle that the company aims to bring to market by 2019 and could revolutionize school fleets around the world. And since operating costs are much lower than diesel vehicles, the hope is that, while they cost more, electric buses could help education districts spend less on vehicles and more on education, which I'm sure you'll agree is a very good thing indeed. And with that, it's time for me to bring another episode to a close. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, tell your friends about the show and if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness, so make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the moment a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend, make sure you do something fun, and don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spin by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero Certified Renewable Electricity Company. That's Ecotricity. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.